Hello everyone, my name is Spencer Adams. I'm a student at ECPI University pursuing my bachelor's degree online in nursing. This is going to be a brief lecture on diabetes. Here we have our presentation objectives listed above. At the end of this presentation, you, the learner, can show your comprehension of the material and demonstrate your understanding on a five question quiz. Blood glucose, also known as blood sugar, is your body's primary source of energy. It is created from carbohydrates which are found in the food and drinks we consume on a daily basis. After its creation, blood sugar is then transported to all the cells found in the body through the blood. The body has several systems in place in order to help regulate blood sugar, but those are the focus on a different presentation than today. Monitoring blood sugar. On the screen are blood sugar ranges for those who are non-diabetic, pre-diabetic, and diabetic. Blood sugar can be checked at home, on the go, or within a medical facility. This can be done via a finger stick which checks capillary blood sugar levels giving you a fast but accurate read. A venipuncture can also be done to check the body's current sugar level through tests like the BMP or basic metabolic panel. A1C is another blood test that can be completed to check the body's average blood sugar over the past three months. Hyperglycemia. Diabetics can be considered, can be considered hyperglycemic when their blood sugar is over 180, an hour or two after a meal. Some signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia include increased hunger, thirst, and frequent urination as well as blurred vision. Diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA. DKA can occur when the body has an excess of blood sugar outside the cells due to a lack of insulin. Your body tries to compensate for this by breaking down fats to sustain itself. When fats are broken down, acids called ketones are left behind. A sudden accumulation of ketones in the blood can cause acidosis. This condition can be left can be life-threatening if left untreated, leading to a coma and death. DKA symptoms are include increased thirst and urination, persistent nausea and vomiting, weakness, shortness of breath, a fruity scented breath, confusion and lethargy, and weakness. Treatment for DKA includes hydration, insulin, and electrolyte replacement. Hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia occurs when the body does not have enough blood glucose to support adequate function. Typically, a blood sugar below 70 indicates hypoglycemia, but this range may actually vary based on other factors such as BMI. Some signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia include shakiness, nausea, loss of color or pallor, lightheadedness, sweating, hunger, poor concentration, anxiety, and headache. Hypoglycemia can occur while a person sleeps as well. Signs of this might include confusion and lethargy upon awakening, damp clothes and sheets from sweat, if hypoglycemia can persist long enough, it may become worse, leading to a, a loss of coordination and drowsiness to the point where a person becomes unresponsive. In a conscious person, hypoglycemia can be treated by eating carbohydrates. In an unconscious person, it can be treated through medications like glucagon, which help to raise blood sugar rapidly. Managing blood sugar. Diabetes and blood sugar can be managed through several lifestyle modifications. Creating routine can help you manage blood sugar checks, medications, diet, and exercise. Consistency is key to, to success here. Checking blood sugar at key times, such as upon waking up, before a meal, about two hours after a meal, and before bedtime. Making a habit to carry extra supplies needed to chest yourself and snacks that are appropriate will help prevent yourself from becoming hypoglycemic unknowingly. 
When eating, it's important to stay mindful of what you're eating and how it may affect your blood sugar. A balanced diet with vegetables, pro fruits, proteins, and whole grains can help control glucose levels. Exercise plays a key role in decreasing blood glucose levels, but always follow recommendations from your doctor before exercising. Medications that help decrease your blood sugar must be taken as directed. Taking too much or too little can dramatically drop or raise your blood sugar. There are several types of medications that can treat diabetes, and these range from insulin, which may be rapid, short, or long-acting types, oral medications, which can help decrease blood sugar by stimulating insulin production or the excretion of blood glucose from other parts of the body. Complications associated with uncontrolled high blood glucose. Over time, blood glucose can cause vessel damage, blood vessel damage, which may lead to heart disease. Vision problems can also occur with high blood glucose over time. Diabetic retinopathy is when damage to the retina occurs because of high blood sugar levels in the vessels. This may lead to blurred vision and blindness. CKD or chronic kidney disease is a slow progressing problem that can occur when blood sugar is left unchecked. unchecked. Kidney blood vessels are damaged and this may lead to inability of the kidneys to function. Dialysis or kidney transplant may become the only options towards late stage CKD. Nerve damage can also occur from elevated blood glucose levels. This type of damage may delay nerve conduction, which can cause numbness, tingling, or loss of sensation in the extremities. This can result in injury, which may worsen over time due to a person not knowing that the problem is present to begin with. All right, everybody, the presentation is complete. Uh, here is the link to the short quiz. If you please can take that for me, I would appreciate that. Thank you. And finally, we have our list of references. If anyone would like to uh, do some more research or find out any information on the topics that were touched on here, you can do so at these links.